I am Dungeon Master, your guide in the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. Alright, welcome back everyone. I am the Dungeon Master and this is Dragons of Starfall. Tonight on this very spooky session, we rejoin the party as they have entered the lair of the lich-like, uh, I can't think of an L word that means mushroom. So, the, uh... Death Shroom, as we have dubbed it, is a huge um, mushroom myconid, but it's been twisted. It has an actual mouth with sharp, jagged, nasty, pointy teeth, and it grins at you with this almost Cheshire cat mixed with... Pennywise the Clown-like grin that just reeks of it wanting to consume your flesh and, you know, devour you. The tendrils of this Myconid's legs and hands seem to like stretch out and reach down to the floor with spider web like filaments that allow it to grip onto any surface and just kind of glide across as it uses them like the many legs of a millipede or a centipede as they uh waver and wiggle and eerily like move it along with a locomotion that is just um disturbing you know? gross. yeah yeah it's just it's, yeah man this thing is gross you, you don't like it you know and then on top of all of that that smell of rot and necrotic death that i described when you first entered the first area of the trials has become so overwhelming and and strong that you can tell if this thing isn't the source it is like on top of it or something you know uh whatever is going on with uh with with the rot and the death it's either coming from this thing or um you know it, it it's feeding this thing it, it, it's here it's here in this in this area, and if you guys uh, double click on your tokens, you will uh, of course uh, be taken directly uh, to the map, and we can um, kind of get going with with uh, you know you guys getting killed here. 
Okay. Well, Can we roll initiative. Well, I mean, if if you want. <laughs> I mean, but wait, I. So now that I know that this thing is like wickedly like approaching us, it's it's less. I I less want to touch it and like try to. He, I just want to touch it and try to save it. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And and I I want to just you know break the DM wall just a little bit here, just to um, make it clear that when when I say that this thing is like you know wicked looking and coming at you and all of that, I do mean that. But if if there was no possibility of like, you know, non-combat solutions, you know, non non-violent solutions to this encounter, like I, I would have said something out of session or something like that. But typically speaking, the way that I design any encounter is that I set it up so that there's at least one non-violent option, you know, depending on when you choose to try that. Obviously, like once yeah. once the swinging starts, it's it's a lot harder to get people to calm down. But you know, basically, there's usually something that can be done to avoid violence. Oh yeah, man, totally understand. I, I was just like, man, I, now that I see you coming out of the shadows, I don't want to help you. Oh, yeah, he's he's gross. Okay, I think, um, I mean, if we don't roll initiative, should we try to cast a spell on it? Well, well you, you guys you guys roll initiative so that we can take this in, it. like, turn order, you know? But, yeah, like... Okay. I was just trying to cheat a little bit. Yeah, I was like, maybe I we can get around without initiative. No, 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 19. I would still like the chance to try and talk to it, but if that doesn't happen, then... I mean, we can, we can, tr if you go near the front, it might not be a bad idea. Well, I can also fly, so. So in the last episode as well, we, the, the mushrooms uh, were afraid of my shield light. I still have the shield light. Um, and I have a spell that is like a stronger version of that. I have the daylight spell. Um, so if this thing hates light, we can really pin it down with uh, this daylight spell. It's it's pretty good. Uh, I'm reading through it right now. I think we need to still try to approach this creatively, not um, I don't know my my sense. I have no reason to think this other than just kind of having a gut feeling. But my sense is that the mushrooms kind of know how we're approaching each of these trials they know kind of what's going on so even if we do end up fighting i think how we approach the um situation by trying to figure out if we need to fight will make a difference to how you know they view us going through the trials does that, does that make sense yeah is it about intention i guess Okay. <clears throat> I've rolled. Okay. And here we go. Riggs, you're up first. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to try to approach this in a uh, non-aggressive kind of way. So I'm going to kind of um, like put my weapon over my back so I don't have anything in my hands. And I'm going to move up 25 feet. And um, how does it react when I move towards it? It continues gliding slowly towards you, grinning its wicked grin. You, you can see waves of spores falling off of it as it moves. Okay. And I, I kind of put my hands up and said, uh, say, um, hold on. I, I think um, 
we have no uh, evil intentions here. And I think you should hear us speak before um, this goes any further. And I, I say my friends may share some things in common with you. And I'll stop there and I'll take the Dodge Jackson and uh, and that'll be my turn. As Riggs prepares to defend himself from any incoming attacks, the Death Shroom glides forward. Well, once you actually end your turn. Death okay. Shroom. The Death Shroom glides forward about 20 feet. And as it does so, a plume of spores shakes free from its head as it kind of rattles around almost like uh, a rattlesnake tail when it gets agitated and then a uh No, I guess I just uh, move another 20 feet. 5, 10, 15, 20. And I get right up here on you. And now you you know that you're like within my range. Um, but also, uh, you, you um, are like close enough to the to the spores um that like you know that like if it continues to release these like plumes of spores that you're within the range of that as well um but because you did not take any uh combat actions you know other than preparing to dodge and all of that you have a moment to kind of like study the death room as it moves in on you so you may roll for perception rigs rigs open your okay eyes. i will and i will use inspiration here mm, yes um and that means i can roll with advantage right Correct. so I, I will i will roll. Riggs is so level-headed today. He's doing great. Good no, no, use no, 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 of engine. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd almost give you inspiration for using inspiration if, you know, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, 19 is way better than 2. Yeah, so with your no, 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 19, you can, you can see that uh, the, the spores that this thing is putting off are like tiny little black skulls and the myconid's face resembles a twisted skull and all of it just kind of like points to like why would these myconids have like humanoid skulls or whatever like this this thing is imitating something or has been corrupted by something or like why why does it look like a skull can i can i say something to the group yeah absolutely uh and i kind of yell back to the group and i go this this thing may not be what it appears to be And I and that's mm. that's it. It's like okay. Foul sorge. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Foul sorge. Yeah, if you switch the first two letters. It's a spoonerism. Mm hmm
Man, I'm thinking all types of things. All kinds of things. I kind of wish it would do something first. That way I could just react. It so far, yeah. Let's see how so. Let's see how. All right, let me move up there first. You are just move. out of the range of the spores. Oh, well, I don't breathe, so I don't have to worry too much. Oh, I have to yeah. get in my skin. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna be protective first. I'll save. I'm gonna just bless everybody. Awesome. Thank you. Also, Soulforge has a lantern lit. How does it react to that? Sorry for interrupting. Oh yeah, as as the light approaches, you can see it shining off of the myconoids um skin. It's not really skin. The uh crust. Membrane. Yeah. Uh, and for the first time you see in its sunken features you know the clear nostril and eye sockets and cheekbones this whole like myconoid has evolved or changed or whatever to resemble a skull with mushroom uh arms and legs and a mushroom cap but otherwise it looks like a skull with you know these myconoid like attachments almost yeah that's insane okay. i don't know what to think there isn't an effect for the helm it's only damage if it's undead in 30 feet so uh would it do damage now no okay good so it didn't get hurt all right so i blessed everyone i think that's uh Good move for now. Um, real quick, I just noticed uh, Lady Angelica's cloak isn't showing up. It gives her the poison resist. That's all I wanted. Sorry, hold on. This. Yeah. Um, so... You have to wear it. Yeah. Um, you, had it it's you had it carried. Oh. Okay. Um, so she's going to transform. Lady Duck is going to transform and fly up to about here and then go up enough to be sort of out of range and she's going to try and reach out psychically to the death cat myconid and or the deadhead myconid or death monster whatever it is and just say uh be at peace friend we mean you no harm um is there a way we can help you from in this place Does that draw any response to it from it, or it does not? Can it freely communicate back with you when you ask it something? Yeah, it's, it does not respond to me at all. Yeah, I don't think so, man. Okay. Um, well, I am going to. Do something not dumb. And I'm going to twin up the always popular haste. The ever popular haste. Yep. It's just it's a it's a you know, it's a backup plan. So that should be rigs and R and get it. Um and I will cut that off, and that will be my turn. Since, and I'll let everybody know that it, it did not respond to me at all. Uh, 
All right. Here we go. So I, I also have um my shield out with my light, correct, DM? Yes. From the last session? Okay. So I'm going to go five. How much speed do I got? Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. So. So you get an extra action now? Yeah, and they can move more and get better armor. Well, so you could one, use one action to try to help it, and if that doesn't work, you still have another one. Yeah, that's true. Can can I... Uh, how do I pull up haste? Then spells off on the right by the library. If you just type in haste over there, it'll give you all the information. I just dropped it in chat so you can see it. Oh, there you go. That too. Okay, so I get... Hold up, it's not opening. Let me just look it up. I'm still kind of done with this dang app, to be honest. Sorry, I just want to figure out how much move. So haste, I have plus two bonus to AC. Additional. One attack dash. Okay. So it's an action. I don't get extra movement. Okay. Yeah, but you can use that extra thing as a dash. Got it. Okay. I was just wondering if I got extra movement as well, but I do not. Okay. All right. He, so I'm going to go, so what I do is when I approach slowly, I, I shine the shield at it. It doesn't, like, uh, seem triggered by my by my light on me. I'm just testing it out, because in the last room, the, the mushrooms did not like the light. So let's see how yeah, he Yeah, this one does not like the light, but is not... Um, running away from it? Running away like from it. Like, it's, it's more like his eyes... Uh, do the opposite of dilate. Um, Openate. And and um, and um, like he <sighs> recoil. Like, like when somebody opens a window in a dark room, like a curtain in a dark room, and the bright noon sun shines on you, you're kind of like ah, you know. Contract. Yeah, but but like you're not hurt or anything you know okay i was just wondering if it was uh not a fan of it but i get it it's just like why turn off that light you know what i mean i was laying down okay so come on man so what i want to try to do is um i'm gonna put my sword away and i'm oh, technically i don't have any movement fluke can i can i go back one because i would have another five feet to approach it yes okay because I could go there and then up one diagonally to get to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my weapon away. And I'm going to walk with my palm out. right? And I'm going to uh, say, if you are sick, let me try to help. And I, I'm going to use five points of lay on hands to try to cure a disease um, on this mushroom creature. And I'm going to approach it within five feet with my palm out. And let's see how, if he bites my hand off, I guess, I guess I asked for it. As Arn's glowing fingers brush against the Myconids, mushroom, mushy, muscly mass the glow kind of like burns away some of the spidery web filaments and as it does so the face of the of the skull becomes slightly less 
menacing and grim it also loses uh, 25 percent of its maximum hit points it does yeah so oh great uh that would be and then don't say it out loud yeah uh what's hold on move the decimal over one spot on the number double it and then half that would be 25 oh Oh, yeah don't worry I, i know i'm just trying to figure out the remainder of this here so uh okay um the the ten percent would be that twenty percent would be that and then uh, half of that would be that so okay and then that minus that is that There you go. So he has lost a quarter of his total hit points without even like anything, but it seems to have cured him more than anything. And I keep calling yeah. I keep calling him a, it a it a him. It's an it. It it, it has no gender. Okay, so um, a couple questions. When you say it doesn't look, it looks less menacing. Could a um, uh, another way to describe it be like shock or surprise? Um, maybe like. You know, like it's it didn't expect me to do that. Does it look what I'm trying to say is, does it look like it wants to be happy, but it can't to be happy? Like it's, what I mean is that rather than looking like the grimacing skull of death, it softens its uh, features just a little bit to where it looks okay. slightly more like a skull in repose you know than okay. than an evil skull that wants to uh you know bite bite the tip of your finger off okay no i totally understand now that okay so it's like um okay so i think i might be helping it so with my other action with my haste i'm just gonna go ahead and try to spend um so i guess technically i can only cure one disease at a time but if i spend more hit points to cure it um could we go around that or would i have to do it just one at a time what do you say me yeah you're the dm i gotta well I, yeah I, but i i can't tell you that okay 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 got it got it that's true i guess i'm just gonna go for the safe play and just give it another five points of my own hands and we'll go from there well not this turn i i'm hasted i can do it again right oh, oh wait oh wait no. wait no it's not, it's not a spell it's not a spell so i i can do it again okay yeah, because te- technically I wouldn't do it if it was like cure wounds because it's two spells, but I mm-hmm. it's not a spell. It's just a, an ability that. Mm-hmm. Paladins have. But you have to use another action. But yeah. Yeah, but because I'm hasted, I have two actions now. Correct. Perfect. Okay, so as uh, you you go to to do it again, uh, indeed, it it does it does uh, work again. And he is reduced by half. It is reduced by half, and the skull looks far less grimacing. Okay. So what what it looks like is I as as I'm reaching into it basically because it's like melting away some of the outside like flesh kind of. Um, when I see, I imagine when I push into it, I can see kind of like a a maybe like a hum of a light coming out of it. Um, either because it's hollow and my light's reflecting in there or or just because it's my light blinding me. But I imagine that I see my hand going in and I put my shield away and I use my other hand and I reach in with both hands and I say, if you, I say, um, truly, I only mean to help. And then that's it. Okay. And I pass my turn. Sorry, I always forget. Uh, Sir Thomas steps in front of Lady Angelica and says, I think you should stay back from this thing, my lady. Uh, she transforms, so she's flying up above. 
Oh, you're transformed? Let me get Yeah, she could bonus action so she could get some of him just in case. Okay. He, he yells it up at you. Yeah, well, then I just step up here by the melee guys, but let me get your token up so that I can. Oh, um, can I, before, I'm sorry, before I end of my turn, can I have told my, my people that I'm helping it? Like, it, it seems to react, or I mean, they could tell, right, that it, it's reacting yeah. well. Okay, got it. Just double checking. Yeah, it's not going to eat me this time, guys, I think. And if it does eat me, well, I guess you're just going to have to use your better judgment. And yeah. that's where you're wrong. Because as Sir Thomas More ends his turn, before Electo can go, the Death Shroom takes its legendary action to attack with its spores. Um, well, no, not with its spores. With its tentacle. Uh, everybody within range, which is just you and Riggs. So it reaches the tentacle at it, you said, at Riggs? The tentacle whips out, uh, it, 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 it's like a tentacle, but it's really like the spider filament spider web like filaments of of its mm. mushroom thing yeah, ba yeah, yeah basically it's a fast growing fungus that can create whip like tentacle appendages really quickly okay i say um i'm oh, sorry it's not my turn <laughs> yeah and then i have and then i have uh one uno mas uh uh actions uh attacks and so i am going to roll randomly to determine which one uh it attacks i'm just gonna use the fact that you're closer to the bottom of the map and Riggs is closer to the top of the map to say that Riggs is above 51 and above and you're 50 and below nice so that's Riggs, right yeah, that's Riggs. But okay, so I guess we see. Nice. <laughs> oh man, Riggs! I hope you don't die right now or get sucked in. If you get sucked in, oh, it's gonna be all bad. Aw, I get a critical hit, but no extra bonus like triple crit damage or anything. What the hell? Wait, it just automatically crit him with the tentacle, like it like touched him. Yeah. <laughs> and and. and yeah. It, it it deals bludgeoning damage, but then also some of the spores fly off of it. Oh no, what if he's spreading whatever he has to you, man? And he indeed does. Riggs is poisoned for 20 more damage as, as the spores kind of like make contact with your skin and it starts to blister and uh you ever have like uh burning thistle burning nettle or whatever burning thistle where like you just brush up against it and all of a sudden you're breaking out in blisters oh i see so it doesn't like grab him it just kind of like rubs up against him yeah like just, oh and then the tentacles go away or what do what happens whenever yeah like they they like stay or they fall and break off it doesn't matter he'll make more yeah so the ones so um can can you explain something to me just just like what happened in front of me yeah so two tentacles came out to touch me in rigs um one missed me and the one so what i'm just confused why i was still in the like i was still possible it was still possible for me to get hit or wait was there three tentacles is, is that what happened yes Oh, okay, and you just chose which one it went to okay yeah I totally missed that part okay. yes, I make three attacks. Okay, now I understand. I was just trying to understand what it is doing. Okay, yeah, it's just like attacks at us. Yep, and and the tentacles, they're not the whip like appendages. They're not like necessarily just my arms. Like I can make them out of like my fingers, or I can make it out of what would be my mushroom butt. Like I yeah, can. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I it's, can it's just like have vibrate. whips come. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's cool, right. man. So Electo. Hey, thank you, Michelle. Okay. Um, so I am going to get on my carpet of flying, um, and fly up, um, maybe like 20 feet up in the air, 
Um, and get a little bit closer. Um, and then I'm going to call out to the group. Um, this thing doesn't know what's good for it. We need to keep healing it um, at all costs. And I am going to cast Hold Monster on the Death Shroom so that he can just hold still and take medicine. It's like when you have to put a... a... Uh, what are those things called? The squirters <laughs> down your dog's throat? You just got to force it down there? <laughs> what about a gun? Get that weak shit out of here. I can only do that once. So... Uh, okay. Correction, you can't even do it once. <laughs> well, okay, okay. I only had the chance to do it once. <laughs> and I am on the carpet. I Son of a bitch. <laughs> I, I gotta put you guys up against something that can like communicate so I can talk some shit again. Right? <laughs> no, I, I think this is a good change of pace. Usually everything talks to us. Yeah. yeah. All, right. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that was a whole lot of nothing, but I'm up in the air. air. For sure. All right. Round two. Lair actions go off at initiative count 20, which is immediately after Deathshroom's turn. Riggs. Well, he asked for it. He's going to get it. Wait, wait. We said we're no. Huh? What'd you say? So, uh, j so, it, so when I was healing it, it looks like it wants me to heal it. I think whatever it is wants me to help it, but the virus or like whatever is affecting it doesn't want to, you know, it doesn't want its host to die. So it doesn't want me to help it. So may, so that's why Electo said we need to keep healing this thing because it, its health is going, like I can feel it becoming weaker. Like it, it's whatever I'm doing is going to end up right. taking it down to zero hit points anyway. So you it's in place now because I hold monster, right? Well, it's it not in place. It failed. Well, it's but it's failed. I have an idea for you. Since you're very large, or you can get very large, you can just grapple it and hold it in place while I keep healing it. At the expense of your body, of course, because it will be able to touch you more. But if if some if you're thinking about something Riggs could do, maybe growing large and detaining it could help us. It's up to you, though. That's just my idea. Well, hold on. Let me see here. So I have my runes, and I think one of them will restrain it. Let me see here. Yeah, the fire rune, but I, don't you have to hit it? I, I don't think we should hit it because I, I think it, it's not attacking us outwardly because we haven't done any harm to it. Ma yeah. But as soon as we hit okay. it, it's going to start doing shit to us. I'll, try to, I'll try to grapple it then. I'll try to grapple it. Do, if I flank him, will I get advantage on the grapple? Yes. Okay, so I'll, I'll flank... I'll use my bonus action to do Giant's Might. Uno momento, por favor. Mm -hmm. Like so. And then I will grapple. So do I click the generic actions, grapple? Yes, sir. Did that work? Let me double. Okay. Yeah, there it goes. All right. So, fortunately for you, you have failed to grapple it. And I am not the kind of DM who is going to be like, ah, but you still probably rubbed up against it plenty in attempting to grapple it. Because that would just be kind of cheap. But you can tell from your brief stint with attempting to uh, grapple with it that if you made prolonged contact with its skin, its crust, you would definitely continue to suffer the effects of what happened when it whipped you. Okay. I still have movement, right? Can I move away? You can, but if you move out of its threatened range, it's going to get an attack of opportunity. Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't think of that. Okay. That's good. I'll stay there. But if you have an action, you could disengage. You do have an action. Okay. 
I'll disengage then. Okay. So if I disengage, do I have to double click to disengage? Button? You can. It's it's just a little note, but yeah, okay. you just say you disengage, and then you know. And I can move away. Yeah. Okay. I'll move back here. Back in time. And that is my turn. All right, Death Shroom. Man, I think I'm just gonna like go right here and get all three of you. Never mind. What I <clears throat> what I meant to say was I'm gonna go right here and flail around like I'm just dancing like nobody can can see me. <laughs> and then it's having like a mosh pit by itself. Yeah. In the room. Yeah, you know, like I mean, sometimes it be like that. You know, he's got to let it out. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh oh. Oh, why you no work? One second. Somehow one of his abilities didn't go off. That's your fault, not mine. Uh, yeah, that definitely should have happened. So, uh, I guess I'll just type it in regular and try again. Uh, whatever. Did something not happen automatically? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's just got a little bit of regen. It's not even much. <laughs> well, you didn't even end your turn yet. Is that could that be why? No, no. It happens at the start of my turn. Oh, I see. How is he regaining health? I thought I'm bringing down his hit point max. You are, but I, I, I have a little bit of regen. Like it, it's not much. You know, just. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. But either way, um, I do seem to like get a little beefier. I'll just tell you that. And then I end my turn. And my lair action goes off, so I'm going to pause your timer there, Quick Soul Forge. And so now the lair action is all of these other plants and mushrooms that you guys see here are all like exhibiting the same like rot smells and signs of necrotic corruption that the death shroom is they're just not like sentient or yeah. you know whatever but uh all of them release their spores filling the lair and forcing everyone 
to make a save, which I do thusly. Oh damn it! Not even anybody's in t within ten feet of me. It gets uh, Angelica and Electo, even though they're up in the air. Uh, how high in the air are you? I said 20. Yeah, I thought about the same. 25 to 20 would have been where I would have been. That's just within the 30-foot range of these things. No. So you guys can just fly up another 10 feet next round, and you won't have to deal with this. It's like a it's like a sphere of of spores that like puff out and then like fall slowly to the ground. Okay, I see. Okay, that makes sense. Um, Hold on, so... still doing the the save. Got it. I'm just talking. It's not even my turn yet. Uh, oh my god, there goes. <laughs> Taste the rainbow. So, one, two, three, four. I got a one. Five. Everybody failed except one. Riggs made it. Riggs, big also, Riggs. Doesn't breathe. Mm -hmm. Does that help at all? What's that? Soulforge doesn't breathe. Remember, he 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 doesn't have lungs. So, does that help at all? Ah, remember, I don't breathe. Either. Yes. Like he he just is a robot. Yeah, when you go robot. All right, so no effect yeah. for Soul Forge. And Riggs, of course, big Riggs. So the rest of you, um, God, I'm sorry. Here, oh, it, here it comes. As the spores fill your nostrils and lungs, you begin to cough and hack uncontrollably. You are completely incapacitated for the rest of this round. Holy Jesus, dude. So the only person that survived is Riggs? And Soulforge. Okay, so does that mean that Lady Angelica and Electo... Well, I guess Lady Angelica would fall because she yes. can't flap her wings, right? But Correct. Electo's on the carpet. So Correct. does Electo stay? Uh, the carpet is not affected. Okay, got it. Just asking. Oh, Lady Angelica, don't bonk your head, man. It's 25 feet. It's not that bad. Yeah, you ignore like the first ten feet anyway. So, you know. so did Ar Arn heal it? Like, should I be healing it or hurting it at this point? Healing it. So me healing it made it um, less angry, right? Yeah. So what, what I think is going on is there's the some sort of host inside of it that we need to heal out, but it, you know, like the virus doesn't want us to heal it, so it's defending itself. But yeah. We have to get remove out. curse or something that'll that'll might lift uh, whatever it is or. Pure uh, huh. disease, anything like that might be helpful. So, um, even with healing, would we still be out for this round? I, I can't. Yeah, I guess you can't help us. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, you can either try to heal one of us, so forth, to try to get one of us up, um, or you could try to continue to heal it. Um, well, I can heal all, everybody. I just want to make sure that if I heal the creature, it's not being wasted while it kills us. I don't want to heal it if we have to. Well, well it's going to try to kill us, but we still need to try to heal it. There's okay. nothing. Yeah. Also, do not target the death shroom when you when you heal it because, like, obviously things might work differently with the way everything is set up with it. So, rather than just like healing it of hit points, well, go ahead because it it's at full hit points anyway. So yeah, knock yourself out. Go ahead and target the shroom, and then we'll see. Oh, okay. Because it's at full hit points anyway. It ain't gonna make a difference. I just didn't want to, like, accidentally have it, like, uh, you know, get healed a bunch and be like, oh, wait, but the healing actually did this. That's paste as often or no? I am so sorry, sir. The first part of that was broken up. The haste is concentration. I assume I would have lost that. Ah, yes. Ah, okay. dang it. Oh, we were doing, we were making good work with two actions there. Well, I can do it again. I'm not going to be very offensive on this. So, 
Ooh, okay, so you pray of heal healing everyone? Yeah, so I healed you guys that were injured, and I healed this room to see what happened. Yeah, so as uh, I'm going to pause right there. So as uh, you you use your prayer of healing, praying to um, the gods of twilight and and uh, all of that, uh, Selene and um, you you send out motes of of like dim light that kind of light upon everyone and although it seems to ease their um suffering and heal rigs of some of his uh blisters and all of that um those who are incapacitated are still incapacitated um the death shroom however uh your prayer of healing seems to have had uh a a not damaging as in hit point but like a damaging effect as in the the mushroom is reacting as if you like hit it with a roman candle or you know you got a you got a sparkler nearby it's like flailing at at you like the moat it doesn't like it it didn't like being touched by it it didn't like whatever you know happened it again has resulted in no mechanical change to the hit points or anything but the mushroom did not like your healing magic. Okay, do I happen to see like a body inside or just the skulls? Uh it's it's a giant skull um like shaped it, you you can't see if it is an actual skull inside it or 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 not just yet but you can roll uh for perception um because as your moat hits it like the skin does like draw away from from where where your moat hit it and yeah there is definitely a large skull inside of this cool. of this mushroom all right uh <laughs> Lady Angelica, you take five falling damage. And I assume that there's nothing I can, there's nothing, no roll or anything I can do to escape this. I'm just down for the turn. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you fall to the ground, you hit the ground, doof, you know, your your wings aren't broken, you're, you're not, you know, knocked out or anything like that. It was just you were coughing too much to to really do anything and so yeah there there's no like getting anything more out of this turn it's just yep, i get it i'm incapacitated yep but you are no longer incapacitated once it's the mushrooms turn again okay i'm sleep <laughs> ground i like it yeah um yeah i just have to pass i think i'm incapacitated unless there's any type of save or something i can do uh no um you float on your on your uh carpet like a like a street rat and, and everybody else is is like you know, hitting the ground and falling to their knees. You watched Lady Angelica plummet and you're just like up on your carpet and yeah, you're coughing. Um, uh, Soul Forge's prayer seems to have like helped you a little bit. Um, but yeah, like you, you really look cushy, like somebody from Al-Qadim 
you know, would be stereotyped, you know, like just sitting on your magic carpet, token on your hookah, having a good time while everybody else fights. <laughs> Channeling my inner Aladdin. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I will go ahead and just cough, I guess, and move on. And then as Electo's turn ends, uh, the Death Shroom is going to move. No, I can't move. I have to just take my action. So I attack all three of you again. Does he get a advantage because we're all knocked out? Yeah. Except on Soulforge. Correct. No, 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 19. Hey, how come I didn't roll advantage? Oh, because it's my turn. You're no longer incapacitated. Ah. We're up and fighting, or not. Up and healing. Oh, no, it says you're still incapacitated. What the heck? It's Rig's turn, isn't it? Uh, yes. Well, I'm kind of at a loss here, guys. But um, uh, but I, I'm still taking my uh, legendary action. But I have to I have to roll again for uh, Arn because oh, and Sir Thomas because I I should have had advantage. So I guess you could just roll two d20s and see if they land because it doesn't really matter. Oh, just Sir Thomas. Hit. Just Sir Thomas, yeah. Yeah, because I'm already hit, so you could just roll another d20 just in case you crit. I'm okay with that. Nah, I'm cool. You know, that's the rules. I, I would have been fine with it, you know? I mean, trust me, I'd love to crit you, but uh, I already rolled a no, 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 19. I, I'm just going to... I'll you know, spare you today, yeah. Uh... Ouch, I'm getting brushed up and I'm not even awake, man. This seems kind of weird. Our pain was terrible. 19 and then 12. All right, Riggs. Oh, man. I don't know, guys. I'm like, should I attack? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I said what I said. The Arn said what he said. He says that we need to keep healing it. But if Riggs comes to a decision where he thinks he needs to attack it, then that's Riggs. You know what I mean? That's up to you, man. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it, it's like everybody's hurt. <laughs> so, well, definitely, we'll, definitely we'll move. back up as soon as the shroom ends yeah. the next turn. We do know that already. It's a temporary thing. Um, maybe Riggs doesn't know that, though. But also, I, I did say we need to keep healing it. You know, I said that it's going to try to hurt us, but we need to keep healing it. But, but if Riggs is afraid, you know what I mean? I don't want to, I don't want to play your character. I, just want, I want to let you know that that's what, that's what I think I need to do. If you need, if you think you need to slash it, then that, that's a Riggs I'll, thing. I'll, I'll kind of move back here and take the dodge action. I'll give it one more shot. Okay. Uh, that is rough terrain through those plants there. Okay. Um, how far can I move? A half your speed through rough terrain. Okay. Can I, can I move back further? Ten feet? Sure. Or, uh, I, I just want to... I'll move to the back. How about that? We'll give yeah. it one more shot. Yeah. Maybe cover your mouth with the wig. 
That powder's got to taste awful. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to to restrain as far as long as I can, guys. I totally get it, man. I 100% not even joking. <laughs> My character is just would have been just like in the same spot, but he has recently turned a, uh, you know, turned on a dime, so he doesn't really feel like he needs to hit everything. Is that your turn? Yeah, I'm done. I'm sorry. I didn't. I meant to. It's okay. I'm just not trying to rush you. Okay. Oh, yeah. Look at that. As soon as my turn starts, you guys are all not incapacitated. I'm so glad I took that legendary action when I could. All right, it is its turn, though, so let's see who it's Yeah, going. I think for my turn, I... Chase Riggs. I would. <laughs> but I really want to make a corpse. Oh, fuck. Soulforge doesn't even have a body, so good luck. He's like metal and stuff. Yeah, I know, but I haven't hit him yet to determine that. Ooh, one hit. Oh, boo. It does get to hit three people in one turn. Oh, don't try to placate me. I'm trying to kill you. <laughs> I'm just speaking with stats, man. So you take the bludgeoning damage, but you are immune to poison, resistant to poison. What's your poison? Ooh, hold on, let me see. Uh, resistant oh, poison, uh, immune to disease and exhaustion, advantage against poison. Okay, well you can't get any more advantaged than that. Yep. <laughs> I don't even realize that something happened. I just got hit with the tentacles. Yeah. Yeah, the tentacles hit you and it clangs off of your metal arm and uh, the the disease, whatever, you know, doesn't even, you're like, okay. Yeah, it doesn't even penetrate the first layer, man. What kind of wax? All right, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reach in and try to pull that giant oh, wait, skull out wait. of the mushroom. I'm sorry. Initiative count 20 happens first. That's true. So, okay. no, so now, on this lair action, you guys hate me. Oh, I don't think I'm going to hate you. I think I'll be very upset, though. On this round, a tiny version of the death room comes waddling out of the mushrooms. <laughs> out of the the forest mushrooms? Yeah. And, and so... Um, Hey, why do you don't switch up my token? I was like, what? Did it just transform on us? Yeah. Changed up my token. Bad. Oh jeez. There's more like it. Okay, but they look like just to be spores. And uh so as the tiny one comes out. Um, it attacks Riggs. Um, because it's my turn first. But give me a second because I did not put all these awesome ass tokens together for nothing.
Alright. Oh, what? You still didn't fix that one? You bastard. There we go. So, uh, tiny death shroom. He has polar master, right? Yeah, I do. You get opportunity on the way in? Yeah, I got a reaction. Go ahead. Uh, I want to untarget the other one. Hold on. And uh, I will roll my head. Mm-hmm. Ignore that. It doesn't suffer system shock. Okay. You, sli you slice down into the uh, Myconid tiny desk room, nearly slicing it in two its cap split inside it does indeed uh have just mushrooms and not an actual skull but of course who's to say you know that this one is an exact copy of the other one it could just be a um like if you guys know anything about like the largest bioorganisms on earth and all of that it's a uh mushroom patch that stretches for miles and it's all technically the same organism that yeah i've seen it you've seen it oh that's awesome well, well no not with my eyes but i know what you're talking about oh, Sorry, okay yeah. okay yeah so um yeah anyway you know it could be something like that to where this is like a part of the main host or whatever you know Hint, hint. Anyway, uh, Riggs, I attack you now. Well, boo on that. We are not good rollers tonight. Just across the board. Yeah. yeah. Not doing the best. All right. And so then it is now Soul Forge's turn. All right, so yeah, I'm going to reach in there with both hands and try to yank that skull right out. Okay. I going... will use my inspiration. Do I get to use athletics or just straight strength? Uh, well, first you have to try to grapple it. Okay, one sec. Uh, let me find grapple here. Okay, I took off the inspiration, so I'm going to give myself advantage, and I will grapple it. There we go. It's nice. Ooh. So now you have grabbed onto the skull. <clears throat> now, um, basically, you, you make another grapple check to, to um, try to rip it out of there except for uh you have disadvantage on this because like all of the uh little mushroom fiber uh things are like gripping the skull okay i have another inspiration so i use it to negate the roll and just go one straight roll one straight roll There we go. Oh, uh, target already grappled. Hold on. I have to take grappled off of it in order for you to be able to finish this. All right. Uh, try again. Oh, you're going to make... Oh, no, I got to roll again? Yep. Oh, no. Because it didn't roll in opposition. Okay. Okay. Come on, dice. 
Give us this one. All right, guys, let's go. Why isn't it rolling in opposite? Oh, there it is. There it is. Yes. Oh, you got a 20 and it got a one. Oh, um, wow. Poetic. Yeah. All right. Fucking right. All right. So uh, as you yank the skull from the fibrous tendrils of the myconids uh, grip, you can see that this skull is not a ordinary skull. It's the skull of some giant or um, monstrous humanoid. It, it has definite you know humanoid features, the eyes, the nose, you know, what have you. but it, it is not just a large human skull like like what you would find in rigs right now. You know, All right. and nor- I'll use my movement too as well. Okay, I'm gonna take that sucker with me. Oh, I guess. You, you, you move there. Wait, okay. wait, what are you doing? What are you, I don't understand. Why are you moving? Okay, so uh, two things happen. First, as as you uh, pull the skull out, um, the the death room releases its spores. Sorry, Sir Thomas. And well, nothing can kill Arn. I'm not worried. Something already did kill me, man. And so everybody within uh, 15 feet takes 2d6 necrotic damage. Oh, I roll snake eyes. What? Oh, perfect. Oh, but Soulforge lost his concentration, so all the bless expires. And then everybody but Soulforge makes this constitution save, and I realize that I rolled for you anyway, Soulforge, but uh, I'm just going to take you off of it. And so uh, there it is. Nobody. Because you're... Oh, wait. No, you're just resistant to poison or advantage on poison saves. Yeah, unless I have to breathe them in. But if it's just a poison on the skin, I'm pretty sure. It would oh, be this bad. was breathing in. Yeah. So, um, yeah, everybody is uh, safe from the from the poison damage, but the necrotic damage of the spores, the tiny little skulls, as they hit your your skin they like bite you and and gnaw at you and like deal this necrotic damage and and then as you uh move away the death room's body uh still still attacks you okay no problem i'll take it At this point, I'm the Terminator. It can try whatever it wants. I'm like, dun, 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 dun. I'm taking this skull. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you got the skull either way. I'm just saying. I didn't like do anything to it. Just... Does this, does the structure of it change? Like, Does it flop like it no longer has a skeleton? Uh, well, yeah. The, the part where the face was is all mushy and just like the the mushroom fibers are like filling it in as it like heals slowly but yeah so he just has like a skull software has like a big skull just carrying with him and oh my god nice i am just rolling like duke oh you still failed with a 15 All right, now it is your turn, Lady Angelica. Uh, I'm going to reapply haste, but only to Arn, because I don't have that. I want to save some of those sorcery points just in case. I think you guys can heal it now. 
like I'm hoping to take this necrotic thing away, and hopefully, I think you can heal it. I think the only thing you just pulled structure. I don't think you did anything to it. Like you, we could heal it before this, and then I'm gonna just fly up forty feet in the air, so I'm above the clouds next time, straight up. Okay. But arm has haste again, so that's good. Okay. Okay, so let me paint this little scene out of how this looks when I cast this. So um, what I'm what's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast or not cast, but I guess activate my Asimar Radiant Soul ability, um, which allows me to like fly and um, you know I turn yeah. all glowy. Yeah, so your what happens wings is, are out. Yeah. Got it. Okay, so what happens is um, like Arn is laid out flat on his back on the floor, um, you know, feet away from the mushroom, and um, suddenly his eyes just like wide like open up wide you know cliche but his eyes uh are emitting like a golden glow from them right and um my wings my the tendril like wings sprout from my back and they almost lift me off the ground so that's how i get up from getting prone is they like push me up off the ground and um in this state i hold my hands out wide and just like my hands start to glow like i'm casting or using my um uh, lay on hands feature um, and I'm going to extend both my arms into the mushroom and expend every single point of my lay on hands left that I have um, into it um, and see if this does anything so um, like very intensely I reach deep into it with my with my eyes glowing and like my tendrils like blowing in the wind behind me and I'm healing this thing with every single hit point I have so that's 30 uh, well it would be 30 35 right now because i'm level nine because i used 10 in the past and i have 35 yep, 35 so um the my conids body uh begins to like shift and change and almost like revert down to a um, dormant state of uh, mushroom growth where where it no longer looks like a sentient myconid and is just a large black mushroom like you've seen before. A large black mushroom that we've seen before. I'm sorry, I'm like totally blinking. There are poison mushrooms that were large and black. Oh, is this thing so? Uh, it turns into a poison mushroom. Does is it still like giant or is it small? Now? Is it like a patch of mushrooms? Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, it's it's not giant. It's it's a pretty big mushroom. But it is no longer sentient looking. Right. Does anything happen to the little baby one? Uh, the little baby one still seems to be like attacking rigs, but uh, it's it's not like much of a threat. Rigs basically chopped it down to one hit point, and it's just you know going off of quote unquote instinct, you know. So I guess. I guess mechanics wise, would this thing still be? Um, well, I guess we don't know until the start of its turn, right? So it's just like a mushroom now. Um, and I, mm -hmm. so as soon as it turns into the mushroom, um, and I give it all my healing magics, I pull my hands out, and uh, I have movement still, so I can move. Or I guess it, I guess this is where we figure out if it wants to attack me. If I move away, it gets a reaction and it hits me. So I'm going to fly up 30 feet in the air mm -hmm. um, with my movement, just straight up. And, and like, when I fly, it, it doesn't even look like I'm, like, flapping wings. It just, like, I just levitate into the sky. My what, wings just, like... What I like to picture it as is that at first, your, your feathery tendrils kind of, like, expand like a peacock when it, when it, like, does the full plume but obviously not exactly like a peacock just like they go from being kind of bunched yeah. up to where they like expand a little 
and then they stretch out to the side and you lift up. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that happens. So like they kind of extend and they become kind of like a uh, so like a sun how a sun has beams around it. I have beams of light like around my body that propel me into the sky, and I fly up. <laughs> yes. oh, this is so funny. I fly up, and uh, in a booming voice that is not Arn's, it sounds like almost um, uh, I don't know what how to describe it, but holy. Uh, I say. You said butthole. <laughs> but holy. <laughs> uh, I say. I'm such um, a child. <laughs> <laughs> no, I laughed too. I laughed at it too. But uh, oh my god, I totally forgot what I was going to say. He says, um, "Be cured of whatever disease you have." That's it. That's all he says. He he's not very poetic. And that's my turn. Okay. The uh, black mushroom just sits there. Oh, perfect. Sir Thomas Moore goes to eat it. Oh, no. come on, man. Oh, don't don't eat this? No, it's a poison one. Oh. You can eat any other one besides that one. Okay. So go eat this other little one over here? Well, I guess not that one either. Yeah. Ask Lady Angelica. She's got one. She'll tell you. Well, I, actually, I don't know that, do I? She might have one. Sir Thomas, I have to just tell Sir Thomas to stand down. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. I, I, all right. I, I'll just stand down then. Good I have to say that that felt yeah. very good to destroy that creature. Yeah, man, Killing the other mushrooms, I felt bad, but I feel like that was that was pretty cool. We blasted the. Necrotic. I'm like looking at you guys. Was that cool? Or I don't really know if I did the right thing or not. Yeah, no, I think so. I, I think I, I think we forgot to short work, but we got to the the right answer. You know what I'm trying mm-hmm. to say? I I think you guys will find out what's going on pretty soon. Electo. Just gonna drop the little. Uh, well, there's just the little baby one now, right? Um, that is hitting rigs. Yeah, yeah, it's it's over there. You know, you guys are like, Riggs, stop playing with that small mushroom and get back over here. <laughs> He's like, yeah. Can I investigate the the bigger mushroom? Yeah. No, it doesn't. Okay. It appears to be a roughly one and a half foot, so, you know, pretty big for a mushroom. Uh, black mushroom like the ones you found before in this general area. General area. Is there any indication as to what could have caused it to become all spooky? Well, not from what you can tell from the mushroom right here, you know, that you're in investigating right now. Uh, perhaps, you know, uh, more thorough investigation of like everything around here will reveal something. Okay. Um, can I also do that on this turn or do I need to? Oh, wait? hell no. Okay. Fair enough. Riggs. Uh, oh, I lost my character sheet. There we are. Okay. Um, I'm not very good at this, but I will try to investigate. There's still a little mushroom attacking you. I thought, is he? Okay, he's got a little bit of health. One hit point. Can I hit him and then investigate? Um, No, because that would be two actions. Son of a... Well, you're leaving me no choice. Oh, oh, you, you had him targeted. Now... Yeah. Now, okay, there you go. You could have just on him. He's tidy. You're leaving, leaving me no choice, but uh, I'm going to have to hit him. Yeah, he's biting your ankle. <laughs> oh, man. You leave it like you like blow a trench through it. Yeah. <laughs> As you slam your double bladed glaive down into the tiny mushroom. It explodes in a poof of spores. At what HP? <laughs> I know. Wasted crit, huh? <laughs> That's so funny. 
kind of go. I, I love mushrooms. I didn't want to kill that one. <laughs> Pretty aggressive action to not want to kill it. <laughs> uh, and then I'll move. Oh, what the? What? Wait, what's going on? Hold on. I don't know what it's trying to say to me here. Oh, I have to give it one hit point again in order for me. They're like, they're like, oh no, dude, you can't do any of that stuff. You're dead. I'm like, yeah, but this is a death effect. <laughs> so I have to give him one hit point in order to screw mm -hmm. you over here. What? So I got to hit him again? No, no, no. No, he's dead, but it's not letting me do his death effect. Oh. So so he explodes into a into a ball of sp sp spores. And so you take the oh my god. That is three oh, yeah, snake three in eyes row. in a row. That's good for us. No. No, it's not. Because now <laughs> the Tarask shows up. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I want more spoiler damage. Yeah. No. But, you know, like, come on. That's so ridiculous. Well, and well, then well, you well, save well, versus well. the poison. So, uh, yeah, you, you you take, you know, a little bit of damage and then, you know, walk away, not even looking back at the explosion of spores behind you. Because, as we all know, cool guys don't look back at explosions. Definitely not. Riggs doesn't even know what happens half the time. Yeah, it, it just uh, it just kind of uh, blends in with my uh, chalk from my wig. <laughs> and, and then I move behind, and that is my turn. The black mushroom mushrooms oh, the lair I however i see <laughs> the lair however begins to shake and quake and you can feel an angry like energy coming from all of the other mushrooms and plants growing in this area cave quake All right, well, I'm going to cast another heal here. How many people are injured? Uh, I'm a little injured. Yeah, so just you and the rigs are pretty injured. I think I lost four hit points total. From falling, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't even notice that I'm hurt, so I'm just going to heal other people. So I got Lady Angelica, Electo, and Riggs. I don't think I've taken any damage, actually. Yeah. Arn has a little Riggs and Lady Angelica and you are the only ones. Sir Thomas rolled through all that perfectly fine, I think. Yeah, theoretically you don't have to cast anything on your turn either. You could just say, I do this, then you do something. Okay. Or you could surrender to the mushroom. Yeah, you could just dive into the mushroom forest and let it consume you if you want. All right, so I'm going to move there, and then that way I can heal everybody. Who's everybody? I can choose six people, so I'm just going to pick. I think I have everybody except Lady Angelica. Oh, wait, I don't want to heal the mushroom. No, hold on. I didn't untarget it. The dice dropped. Oh, well. It's okay. It's it mushrooms. It continues to mushroom. And yeah, I use my movement and I can take up the spell slot. So that's my turn. I'm going to sort of I'll come down and investigate real quick, and then I'm going to fly back up just in case this thing does anything. It's just mushrooms. 
Yeah, it's done that before. <laughs> you have a spider cloak, right? Yeah. So you can technically stick to the bottom of Electo's carpet. <laughs> yeah, that would be funny. <laughs> as you, um, as you uh, investigate it more closely, uh, you can see that it is indeed uh, mushrooming, but at a more rapid rate than what you would expect from an ordinary fungus. It already has... Uh, some pretty thick tendrils growing back down into the ground. Like it's trying to reroot itself? Yeah. Oh, no. <clears throat> it, it may not be evil anymore if we've knocked all the spores out of it. We can just leave, too. I think we're... Uh, well, I, yeah, I guess we don't know. Because the, the cave... So it's my turn. So Arn says... Um, um, or not in Arn's voice, though, then this booming voice. It says, uh, this place still seems sick. And then he looks over to the mushroom and, well, it's rooting itself. You know, you know, you, sh you, you should have tried to connect to the mushroom, like, like we could connect to the other mushrooms. Maybe now we can reach it or something. You should have yeah, just I let me eat it. <laughs> I, I guess we should just like eat the point the sentient mushroom. Um, Doesn't look too sentient right now. Compelled to build my favorite from good and evil. One second, I'm just giving my spells a double take here. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really have anything else besides my own hands. I have like lesser restoration, but I have nothing else that can like affect this thing right now. Um, man, I'm, I'm, you know, I guess I just wait till it roots in its its ground. If if it, um, if it attacks anybody, though, I'm gonna like come down and attack it. Well, that's not true. Why would I come down and attack it? I was I wasn't attacking it. Um, I'll come down to it. I'll, I'll float back down with my movement. I'll just go all the way back down to the ground. And I'll put a hand on it <clears throat> without healing and see if uh, it still tries to harm me when I put my hand on it. It's just a mushroom. But it's rooting into the ground like it's a, it's like a normal mushroom. It would just All, like, all mushrooms do, yeah. Like it tries to anchor itself. Yeah. It's just going faster than expected, that's all. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't hurt me. I put my hand on it. And... I guess I still have haste. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll move. I'll bonus action. Or, you know what? I'll bonus action dodge. Or not Not bonus action. Um, act, whatever. Haste to dodge. And now I'm dodged. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a mushroom. Uh, I I don't I don't know guys. I mean it's just a mushroom, like I, I could probably go kick it over or something. <laughs> so <I'll> it. <laughs> uh no not just leave it. I think the cave is reclaiming its self. Like the actual living creatures. But I don't know, the cave shaking kind of just it 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 leaves like a, a bad impression on us, you know. Like I, I don't I I'm thinking about fireballing the surrounding area, just putting that out. You think to clean it of it, of whatever? What if it, yeah, what if it does get back rooted and then it gets infected again? I don't know. Who knows, dude? We, we need to speak to it. We need like a, a, a like a, a druid or like a... a... Speak, speak with fungus? Yeah, yeah. We could just go ask the mushroom people to come check it out. Like, is it better now or do you I'll need us like, to go in there? No. <laughs> Like in there, fuck that. That's why we sent you in there. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but if it's if it's fine now and they can reclaim it, they might just come back in. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, I think we just wait patiently to see if this thing, like, what happens. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we're not in a rush. La- like, La- Lady Angelica, please stay back from this thing. Like, don't fly down here like that again. I'll, I'll investigate this. Yeah, it's just a mushroom, guys. Like, you know, what do you want me to do with this? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I want you to do with it. That's why I'm sitting here twiddling my thumbs, too. I'm waiting for it to stand up, Sir Thomas. Okay. Has everybody that's been investigating been investigating the mushroom specifically, or did anybody look around kind of more of the general area? General area. And I, I investigated what you guys seem to be freaking out about, so. Got it. Okay. Um, I don't know if this would even do anything, but I'll just try in case whatever, um, you know, poison disease type thing is coming from some type of magical effect. Um, I'm thinking about dispel magic and just seeing what that does, not necessarily to the mushroom, but just kind of to this area. Is there a way that I can try that? To the skull that Soul Forge is holding? Um, maybe we should investigate it first. Um, oh, yeah, maybe we... investigate that. Maybe investigate the area. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to investigate the skull. All right. So walking over by Soul Forge and investigating the skull. All right should say flying over on your carpet floating yes floating electo doesn't fly that's beneath him yeah so uh the skull as you examine it more closely you recognize um as demonic in nature abyssal possibly from the nine hells you're you're not a demonologist to where you would you know know instantly everything about you know this but you can tell that you know beyond being some sort of humanoid uh demonic creature that that this is indeed not a um you know standard humanoid even like from this realm like it's not even a minotaur or a cyclops or something like that you know it's it's demonic it's it's not from this plane (laughs) it's like the soul of a devil yeah yeah and if this skull is here and like you know was powering quote unquote this mushroom uh then it's possible that everything in this area is tainted and corrupted either by the skull or perhaps there is you know more left of this demon that is fueling the um fungus frenzy that is your formidable foe of the hour okay so i'll convey that to the rest of the party i think our true enemy is this skull Um, but i've already used my action so i'm going to let you guys do something with it Explore the surrounding area. Demon parts or anything. It's cursed. I'm sorry, you're breaking up. It sounds like we need to investigate the surrounding bushes and whatnot. Yeah, that's what I was about to do, actually. Um, so I will do that. I will um, start examining the bushes around me. Okay. And um, 
Screw it. I'll use a point of inspiration because my uh, investigation sucks. Mm. Hey. So, uh, as you are investigating, oh man, like it is so obvious that these things have roots that are like all going down towards like one area of the of the ground, and like if you follow them, sure enough, there's like this massive lump of. Uh, something that is just completely covered in these uh, mushroom fibrous tendrils that like wrap all around it like a cocoon. Uh, where is it on the map? And like wherever. Okay, so wherever this these roots are going towards, I, I kind of point to it and yell at, at the group like, that's that's our that's that's where we need to uh focus our energy on. Yeah, yeah, that that mass bundle right there. <laughs> and I, I move by it and and then uh that's my turn. Okay. And uh you know, I I just I mushroom, you know, mushroom it up. I'm a I'm a I'm a fun guy. I was waiting for that one. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to bust it out too soon, but yeah. painful. All right, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move towards the entrance. I think you guys are pretty good now. I'll take this thing. Yeah, Soulforge the takes the skull and leaves. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm gonna the demonic mound. I found something that's piqued my curiosity. I also go over here to heal myself. Oh, wait, let me target myself first. Okay, and yeah, that's it. I'll wait and see what they find. Oh, yeah. Lair action. I almost forgot my lair action. Uh... So as the lair continues to shake and quake, the bundle rigs that that your by <clears throat> begins to glow with a demonic red light. Awesome. Look right into it. And that's it. So Lady Angelica. Lady Angelica, do you speak demon? Uh, yes, I speak infernal. So uh, far down. Speech. Do you know this guy? Is he like a cousin of yours? <laughs> yeah, that's that's. A, yeah. Hey, do you do you like? Can you understand him? Can you like? That that's know? just racist. <laughs> so, do you, like, do you like kind of know what he's saying? <laughs> So I'm going to fly over here, uh, still about 35 feet up, so I'm above the cloud thing. Um, yep. In the spot. <sighs> I'm trying to see if I should cast at it or do something else. So we, we think that this thing is the source, or not the source, but maybe like a concentration, a concentration yeah, of what the problem is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to use Mage Hands to see if I can pull away anything in there and see if I can see anything without getting close to it. Sorry, Riggs. Yeah, your mage hand can move like, you know, some of the mushroom te tendrils and all that, no question, but not enough to really, like, reveal anything. Yeah, I think you just have to either dig it up or blast it out, but I, don't, I was going to use fireball, but I don't want to accidentally hit rings or fireball, so I don't want to do it that close to rings. So 
So I will end my turn. Okay. <clears throat> uh, protection. <clears throat> Divine. One second. What is divine sense? I'm trying to figure out what that is on my sheet here. It allows you to detect whether something is uh, fey, undead, or celestial. Oh, sorry. I just had a sneeze. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to walk over here. Um, I believe so... fiends are on that list, too. Fiends. What? Oh yeah, fiends. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to th decide whether I want to go all the way over here, because Riggs is looking rather large and in charge. Well, I don't know if, if this is going to backfire. I I want to come up to the bulb, this bulb here, and um, piss on the bush. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of so what I'm trying to do is is roll a religion check to see if this feels so I know we I know we think this is but you know what I mean I'm not gonna go poking it right away. Does this feel demonic when I touch it with like divine sense or yeah you your eyes glow when you turn on divine sense which they're already glowing anyway because yeah. you're radiant soul but uh you you can look and see that oh yeah man this thing is. This is some powerful evil juju that's been like corrupting everything in here. Okay, so I I am in my avatar state right now. When I touch it, do I get any inkling of how to fix this thing or, or how to like? So what what I'm trying to as you touch it, a vision fills your head. The Perfect. angel inside your head begins to scream in horror and just will not stop. Uh, if you've ever watched uh, Dragon Ball Z abridged, it's Krillin just screaming ah 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 over and over again as as like it is just freaking the fuck out over whatever is inside there, and as your hand rests on it for a second, uh, you don't realize it until you pull it away. You rip your hand away and everyone can see that it is on fire with black and slightly grayish flames before going out and you look down at your hand and it's charred and blackened <clears throat> and you don't know if this is a permanent effect or what, but your hand is charred and blackened now. I do have a gauntlet on. Maybe, did it burn through like my leather palm palm? <laughs> yeah, you you have to rip your glove off to get the fire to stop and your hand is all charred. Okay. So that I'm still hasted that was that I don't think that was an action. I just walked up to it and divine sensed it, right? Yeah, I mean it, it, we're we're not so much doing the initiative count because like um I'm I'm worried about like you know what you guys all do as much as I'm keeping track of the lair actions and how far along we are in case, you know, like things continue. I think we need to blow this thing the fuck up. Yeah. Okay. No, the reason I was asking because I wanted to know how many attacks I had left. Cause I'm, so what, what happens is in the, in the booming voice, um, Arn just like takes a glance, like looks back at all of you and says, this bulb is horrid. It is tainted. And then pulls out his sword. And then like, it starts to glow. Like I'm casting my smite and I'm going to, plunge it right into the the heart of the bulb yeah yeah and you would have one action left to to make uh an attack a standard attack so you could do your extra attack then too of course okay perfect so i do that uh do you want me to still attack something uh, uh i want you to um hmm I guess it doesn't matter with the damage because, like, you're basically coup de grain and everything. So, 
um, as your sword is pulled from its sheath and it rings into the dark, cold, damp air down here, it begins to hum with a power as you channel your smite into the blade. It glows white hot with divine fury and you slice into the body of whatever this is. The plants begin to shake and quake even harder, releasing plume after plume of the of the um, good stuff. But uh, the only person who's even possibly still susceptible to it is Riggs. So either you do or do not eventually fail and like be incapacitated for a round and all of that. But either way, once you get that out of your system, you know, you're no longer affected by it. So um, we're not going to make you guys roll or anything like that. But all of the plants are just like in full defense mode as you try to hack up this body. Okay, so that's my first attack. And my second attack, just theater of the mind, is... um. So I like plunge my sword into it, and instead of um, pulling my sword out, I just channel more fury, like more um, light into the blade, and I use another uh, like attack, basically. Like I'm just I'm shining this light right deep into its heart. Yeah. So Arn gets a point of inspiration, and as your blade's light burns away the filaments of the plants and mushrooms that have grown all around this thing um you can see it for what it really is and i want you to roll in a uh, religion check Ooh. don't roll these that often oh no way this to... oh go ahead this is an avatar of none other than the demon prince of death himself. Orcus. Dad? Oh, Orcus. And uh, although this is not Orcus's body, Orcus is alive and well. Yeah, in the Night Hills. Yeah. Right. Th this is, is one of his many, like, Horcrux. avatars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that somehow met an end here at some, you know, hero's hand, but it corrupted everything in this area and continues to do so. Okay. So yeah, so the, the, I'm I have the sword in there and before I end my turn, I say, um, this is the heart of a demon. One of many. We're doing something great here. What greater, he goes, what better service than to, ki than to assist in killing a demon? And he just shines more light into the blade. He just continues to f fucking pump this thing full of white hotness, man. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Sir Thomas, of course, you know, tries to get Lady Angelica to, you know, transform and be more careful and all of that. And um, Electo. Um, okay. Um, come over here. Oh. And I have a feeling you can that you can yeah, the I think, yeah, I think that Arn maybe needs to do his own thing. I am going to, you know, be kind of like, I guess, wandering around and investigating this larger area. I don't think my type of magic is going to do a whole lot with what Arn is trying to do. Just see what else I can find. Or 
perhaps Arn's magic alone isn't enough to overcome everything here, and you need to dispel whatever effects are going on with uh, the body in order for his smite to finally burn it clean. Great idea, Lecto. <laughs> Is there a skill of Yeah, my, my, my conscience spoke to me and, and told me to reconsider my action. I'm going to try to dispel magic. It has like an outer shell that we have to crack through and then I can plunge right into it. As much as like I would like to be like, yeah, that's right. I had to like help you guys out. She had already figured this out before. She just like forgot that she said that she was going to do that. And then now that the target is available, I'm just reminding her that Electo's whole plan was to dispel the magic. So, Is there a corpse in there? It's like it's like a Horcrux, man. Like you, you seen Harry Potter, you destroy it, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a whole ass corpse, and it's like, um, it, it looks like how like a vampire in stasis would look, like where it's all shriveled and all that, but still whole. Oh, sweet. Except for the head, right? Nope. The head is on it. Well, whose skull yeah. do I have? Then? I don't know. <laughs> Could be yours. Maybe, maybe it would yeah, up possible. when it comes out. Who knows? Or maybe Orcus's avatar had minions. Yeah. Okay. So I cast the spell magic. What happens? Well, Do first, I need to... for, yeah. First, you have to roll your uh, spellcaster check, of course. Okay. So it's over third level. Make an ability check using your spell. Yep, plus proficiency and the. Sp That's it. Your spell casting ability and proficiency plus d20. Okay, let me get that all going. It's annoying that they don't just have it on a sheet like spellcaster check. Click. So yeah, it should be at a plus eight. Yep, you got it. And you just got it too. Wow any lower and i'd be like oh sorry but I'll try again later yeah as you dispel the demonic magics keeping the corpse of orcus uh fresh um the <laughs> the uh, the uh blade of arn the angelic warrior begins to glow brighter and brighter as it burns away the evil that was this body of Orcus corrupting everything here and eventually it burns away to nothing more than um, the the heart uh, of Orcus just sitting there all black and beating boom, boom. and then like I'm not going to wait as long as it is because like it takes forever it's the slowest heartbeat ever there's like three beats per minute <laughs> and, then, and then like boom, boom, boom. gross so we, we stopped the beating of it no no it's still, oh. it's, it's, it's just like the slowest heartbeat ever. Do it up, Riggs. Somebody finish it off. Yeah, do it up, Riggs. I will do it. Um, can I do a coup de gras on it? Well, we're not really rolling. Just, just say, just say what you do and it happens. Yeah, we, we can end the combat tracker like this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I take out my rapier and I. Uh, yell out, demons be gone. And I stab it. 
you're getting it as you stab into the heart it like shrivels up and dries up like a grape into a raisin <clears throat> and uh a little spurt of black blood flies out across your face and marks your face with some kind of demonic looking symbol and no matter how hard you wipe it it remains it like it like burned like a scar on his face yeah like a because like it, like, is the blood hot like it like it burns oh, on his yeah. face oh so hot. So that's what happens Riggs. <laughs> like you get like a blood spurt and it burns a symbol into your face I, I, I turned to you guys and say, hey, can you help me with this? This kind of hurts a little. So it, this symbol, it looks like clearly defined. Like it looks like. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I, it's like a dragon mark. If you're familiar with those. Can I recognize it since I speak demonic? Uh, yeah. What if it's like a marker so that he knows who killed his heart and then, then he could get revenge on you? Yeah, you can you can roll uh, to to see if you recognize it. Um, Inspiration, roll, if you got it, dude, you should use that. Roll roll uh, either uh, religion or just straight wisdom. I'll do religion. Yeah, no, you you don't quite recognize this one, but it seems to be like a symbol of uh, marking. It's not good news. I don't want to. It's not good news. Well, I haven't had much good news in my life, so that's yeah. par for the course. Also, it still burns, and that's what he was specifically asking for help with. Oh yeah. Well, I assume someone who can heal would do that. Like, let me see what it is first. While well, your face burns, yeah, well, as, yeah. the, as the heart stops beating, I mean, Arn says the good news is that this is a victory for Torn. We have. Do, do you know? Do you guys understand what this is? This is the heart of a demon. I've, I've, I said that already. This is one of many. I think we've. Uh, I think this is a task that nobody but us could have dealt with. Nice. Um, do we want this? We search around and see if we can find the answer in here. And do we think we can bag this heart up or should we just burn it? Can I try dispelling magic on the mark? It's a magical effect. Uh, yeah. Do you have dispel magic? Like enough spell slots? Oh yeah, it's only third level. So. Oh okay. Yep. Yeah, only third level. So, uh, you try to dispel magic on the heart, and um, it's already it's already dead already. It's it's a it's shriveled physical. up. Yeah. No, no, he meant the mark on Riven's face. Oh, I'm sorry. Freaking chemo brain. Uh, you you tried to dispel the mark on on Riggs's face and although uh by dispelling the magic it stops burning and causing him to like you know be in pain the scar remains <laughs> you, you, you're like branded by it well at least it didn't mess up my wig imagine yeah. if you would have cut your wig on fire that would have been hilarious it would have made me very angry <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Well, I don't know what this means, but uh, perhaps that's our trial. I have no idea. I think this is a trial for sure. I think I have an investigator over here that head back to the end of the friendly mushrooms and let them know what's going to happen. So, yeah. after investigating around a little bit, you guys find that there is uh, a path out of here that leads you back to the Myconids uh, lair city. And, no. and 
I'm going to close the map now because we're going theater of the mind as um, <clears throat> you make your way back the Myconid Supreme Sovereign is sitting with many of their Myconoid minions gathered around as they see you guys exit the trial area and like a silent celebration you know begins where where they're all cheering and and applauding but like all in their heads and everything and yeah um anyone who you know is connected with them via the spore ritual is is able to like hear them like cheering you guys and everything for having made it through um and there's a feast that night you know but of course like the myconids eat differently but they still make sure that you guys are fed and probably mushrooms yeah i mean it's it's like you know they feed you what you guys need to eat but like um they 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 have their own ways of like ingesting nutrients and everything so yeah, they just put their feet in the ground and suck up minerals. yeah yeah and how so, far go ahead. sorry i said a quick question how far away is the place where we found the treasure like do we pass back through it or no, no, it's a, that's a different area. We have to go back there after this. Okay, cool. Do, do they react to my face at all? Uh, no. I don't think they. I don't think that they knew the heart was there. I just think that they knew that something icky was going on in that cave. Um, we didn't clear. But as soon as we killed the heart, did the cave stop shaking, or did what? What re? What was the reaction of the cave? Because remember, the other fungus was kind of tainted. Yeah. Uh, after destroying the body and killing the heart, the cave did indeed stop shaking. I okay. am so sorry. I forgot to describe that. That's what they're celebrating here. Yeah, I'm. I'm just reminding. Yeah, because we we forgot to to say that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so perfect. So um, you guys had we... solved the the thing, you know. So I. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, my bad. I want, I want to yeah, ask them if they know what the symbol means. One of the Myconid shamans comes over and is able to uh, ease your, you know, pain with the fresh wound, and it becomes like just a, just like an old scar, but they uh, communicate to you that they have no clue what it is. I thank him and and go. Uh, I'm glad to have helped you, and my group has too. So after the feasting and all of that, they of course provide you with a place to rest, and you guys get your long rest. But in the morning, the supreme sovereign itself comes to wake you and talk to all of you and it has learned that the light bringers have been killed and they were defenders of like the myconoid hive the, the myconoid, you know, family group here. And <clears throat> can when... I... Go ahead. Sorry, you can finish. No, go ahead. So uh, whenever he brings up, whenever he says that we, um, that he, he doesn't like that we killed the Lightbringer, um, I I would stand up and I would say I want to take full responsibility for, for, for the actions. Um, I, without any communication between me and my friends i decided to let the lightbringer take me into its body and they thought that the lightbringer was consuming me um in reality the lightbringer was trying to heal me 
Um, but they did not know that. Um, I know this means not much, but um, we did feel bad. We we learned our lesson, and it it sure did teach me a lesson. It filled me with its its necrotic fluid. And if 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 I could if I could have just explained to them that this creature, this innocent creature, was just trying to help us, it, it would have you know stop that problem it's just the, the, the strange customs down here all right like you just the people they just swallowed me into them they didn't let us know anything i'm sorry it is it, it is my fault i should not have been so foolish as to do so yes well my concern is not so much with who's to blame but what we are to do the light bringers were able to keep very large and dangerous creatures at bay from you know the rest of us here and uh now that they're gone it's only a matter of time before our colony is overrun and destroyed what what dangerous creature creatures besides the mushrooms that come out of that forest uh, attack you and then as if on cue a small hunting party of medium sized or smaller purple worms begins to like ravage the the lair before disappearing back into the ground that's and, pretty and, gross and i say and they will continue this until your home is gone Oh, it's not just them. There's also uh, the the Arumvarax and um, Hook Horrors and, you know, all all kinds of nasty stuff. How can I? It's, it sounds like maybe we need to uh, evacuate this area then if this is not a defensible space. Perhaps we can help you find... A better, a more defensible area. We would never defend ourselves uh, through violence. So perhaps a safer area where there are less things looking to um, to harm you. Yeah, that'd be probably good. I mean, we don't know of any better place. This is like the best yeah. place. Yeah, but I'll kind of turn to the group. Um, I think we, you know, owe it to these guys to try to get them out of harm's way. Um, nowhere is perfectly safe, but maybe we can help them find a better place. I don't know where to take them unless we take them down with us and hope that we find some extra quickly they follow behind us. And there's so many of them, you know? It's like a giant train of them. And then they're just going to get picked off one by one by creatures down there. Because we, 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 like, we came down the big-ass tunnel across fields of lava and jumped over a bunch of shit. Like, yeah, we would, we would not take it to the slaughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, fuck. Well... <clears throat> I don't know how to fix this for you. Um, it is, it is our fault that we we caused this destruction to your colony. Yeah. How? I mean, do you have any idea on how we could be of service to you right now in this moment? Well, you could uh, have stopped that purple worm. Oh well, I didn't get to roll initiative, so I didn't know I was. It was oh good. yeah, that's a good point. Also, purple worms are stupid dangerous, so. Yeah, you know, I'm not not quite sure you guys would want to take one on, but I mean, if we can kill all of them, and then that way you don't get fucked up by worms. I mean, that's what I can do. We can try to kill more things, but I don't, I don't know how we can bring the light bringers back to life. I mean, I I have been able to perform acts of, you know, re re resurrection in the past, but I don't know if I could revive a mushroom that's been dead for over 24 hours. 
Yeah, I mean, a mushroom isn't exactly like a humanoid. I mean, you... there was only two Lightbringers ever? No, but, you know, now now we have just the ones guarding yeah, the other pop. tunnels. Like, that. that's the one that guarded that area, you know? So You could have let us know about the Lightbringers before we went in there, though. It's part like, of the you... freaking trial. Yeah, but you can't go in there and be like, I hope they don't kill our friends. We, yeah, I we, we, didn't, own security system. we didn't think that you guys were going to, like, first of all, go a violent route, or second of all, be able to, like, kill our whole security system. And, like, That's you know, when we had trial is things attacked us. So we just assumed that things were going to be hostile in this area. Well, yeah, this is, this is on you a lot. I don't, I don't know about all that. I, it's. It's on the sovereign. It's not on the. I mean, the, the sovereign. No. Oh yeah. Sovereign. No. No. I. I. I don't. I don't think he meant. Me. I. I. Th I thought he was talking to the sovereign. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I don't want to be rude, question. but like you, you sent us in there with you know not any explanation, and then these creatures who just swallowed us like we yeah, don't know. They, they are vital to your survival. How, how about this? I asked them where did where did they come from, and are there more of them? Uh, that we can bring here for you. They grow slowly over two millennia. They are a uh, symbiotic relationship between the smaller Whoville mushroom myconids on them and their large titan selves. Okay, well, Sovereign, I'm sorry to do this, but let me fill you in, fill you in on what we were doing. We came here to your colony to seek shelter and, you know, be friends because in the past we, we aided you and you told us to go on this journey. Um, but before we came here, we were just going to go deeper into the cave. Uh, we were looking for dwarves. Yeah, and we, you know, we were we went on this mission and we didn't realize that we would get sight get sidetracked this much to where we would need to find you a home. I, I, I just need more, I need more assistance from you. You can't just come into here and fold your arms and then tell me that we have to deal with it. I need, I need oh, to I'm not saying you guys have to deal with it. I'm just telling you that like you really screwed us on this one. Well, I guess it's a little bit of all of our faults this time. Yeah. I mean, do you, do you know where to find the dwarves? Like, can yeah. we, yeah, I know where to find the dwarves. But you're Maybe they can help protect you, and we can travel together there. Oh, yeah, let's, let's that's not we'll bad all idea. go. Why, yes. why, why don't you roll uh, some persuasion on that? Uh, that I can roll. do. Yeah. Oh, and uh, your persuasion is probably pretty good. I'm a plus nine. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I have oh. no idea what's going on right now. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Soulforge is just standing there with his skull. Um, my persuasion is plus zero, but I am going to jump in because that is also what I am thinking, and I will say, please, my um, well, I am I am deeply sorry that we failed you in this trial, but um, I think your best path to safety is if we all travel to the dwarves together. Um, Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, they say that there are far too many of them for them to all travel with you, but <clears throat> they will send, uh, you know, some of their scouts with you. And if it's safe, as you guys go through, the rest of them will follow behind. And the scouts can lead us to the dwarves. Well, right. That's what that's what they would, Yeah, that's that's what they would be doing. You know, you you guys are the are the protected protection. Yeah. yeah. And, and the scouts are just there to like, you know, show send you. messages back and forth. Yeah. yeah. And kind of tell them like, yep, yeah, you know, proceed, like come forward. Yeah. yeah. Yep, let's let's go then. I'm all for it. Yeah, you know what? That I mean, hopefully the dwarves can set you guys up with a home, or or, t or at least lead you guys to a better direction. But yeah. you know, we, we can't be here anymore. So if you'd like to follow <laughs> us down to the dwarves, we would gladly take you and your people. Yeah, and maybe this time after we've uh, 
been in our home for you know like ten thousand years we won't be forced out by some uppity heroes just killing (laughs) willy-nilly yeah it sucks that these uppity heroes saved you saved your guys's life last time and also got rid of the heart of orcus inside that cave but you know it's fine we will still (laughs) take you because we're heroes and we need to help you (laughs) <laughs> and yes. the you'll warn those heroes about the thing that keeps you alive yeah that is integral to survival <laughs> now just to be clear of course the uh sovereign you know is is very um like xerxes from from 300 like you know he he's like it's like this like divine uh, presence on earth kind of like and and it even comes across a little bit like even to you guys like uh you know obviously um i i can only convey you know what i'm capable of conveying and all of that but this guy this mushroom has like uh a cross between like um the the morgan freeman like soothing kind of you know way of talking but then but then like a creepiness uh a sort of like you know alienness uh to yeah. him you know just the, a hippie. He's, just, he's a freaking hippie he just yeah in like the lyrics and he's like yeah man nature and stuff yeah and so you know he's not being like overly hostile in fact like you guys feel very calm talking to him uh you know but he's just got a very alien mindset and you know the way he looks at things and so that's where the points of contention are coming in here well we have a solution we need our let's get to the dwarves indeed and so uh you guys prepare for for the journey. The Myconids uh, equip you up with anything that they can. Um, <clears throat> certainly uh, provide you with rations and you know uh, all all of that sort of sort of thing. Um, so you guys are you know geared up and and ready to go. Um, the scouts three they are in number and and they look like skinny myconids but they move much more rapidly than than some of their more rotund brethren and sister in um fungin yeah fungin and and so uh these these scouts they begin to lead you through the winding labyrinth of caves and caverns and uh, cliffs, and uh, there there's sheer drops and narrow ledges, and uh, occasionally, you know, you guys come across things like a giant scorpion or um you know some kind of uh millipede or um bats swarms of bats and um you know just all all of these various things that just are not gonna pose enough of a threat to you guys you can either avoid them you know get a getting around them and all of that or uh scare them off uh relatively easy and failing that you know like a few swift uh bolts to the to the face uh from from one of your your casters usually does the trick for any stick <coughs> stickier uh encounters that that want to you know continue to mess with you and so um you you make it through you know a lot of stuff and the first several days go like that you know 
but then on like the fifth day of travel you guys come across this giant chamber and the scouts say in their weird alien like talking in your mind way of talking the dwarves are just up ahead we can go no further through this area until it is safe there are many dangers that the dwarves use as natural protection in between here and the and the gate you must navigate through this next area and only when it is safe will we follow That's a done deal. We'll be sure yeah. to make this path safe for you. <clears throat> Sounds good. All right. Any I Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, any idea what kind of defenses they have? Yep. So, well, the dwarves have, like, their own defenses, but they use this as a natural defensive point. As you guys um, enter the area you see the regular cave rock formations of, you know, the tunnels, and then this opens up into a cavern, and there's some stalactites and stalagmites and uh, even columns uh, here and there and, you know, everywhere. And at first you think that what they're talking about is how every so often you'll you'll step on a on a place and it's not quite solid uh rock this whole area is like rough terrain and so you you make your way slowly through there and you're like oh you know is this is this everything but then when you are about halfway through the chamber suddenly a bunch of the stalactites begin to drop down from the ceiling trying to pierce you guys before they right themselves and tentacles come lashing out oh. yeah and so as this threat presents itself and you realize that you are up against ropers well piercers they were called to like they, they're called a couple things but uh as as you as you realize what you're up against we draw to a close for this session of dragons of starfall I want to sincerely thank you guys for playing. I want to thank anyone who's watching. And as always, everyone, good gaming.